Welcome to the show. I, I am ready today. I actually showered this morning. I never take showers in the morning, but because I was up early, I figured let's do an even better show today. I will take a shower in the morning. My hair is groomed. I'm ready to go. And we're going to start by talking about climate change. Uh, you probably have heard this phrase that's thrown around 97 to three. The scientific consensus is that climate change is real or that humans are causing or affecting climate change. It's always a little bit vaguely defined in colloquial speech. When people mention that it's not clear whether we mean 3% of climate scientists deny climate change or 3% of climate scientists deny that climate change is caused by humans or that it's 3% of papers, but some other percentage of the scientists. So 3% first of all refers to papers, not scientists. And often the anti science right will point to that 3% and say, look, there have been minority opinions in the past that have ultimately been vindicated heliocentrism, right? The sun at the center of our solar system, for example. And of course, it's pretty bogus. The reality is that most scientists agreed with heliocentrism to take it as an example. But organized religion was significantly opposed to the theory at a general level. This also ignores that science today functions much differently than it did in the past. But let's forget that for now, right? We've got this infrastructure of what's called peer reviewed scientific papers and a peer reviewed study was done of those 3% of papers that cast doubt on the consensus of climate change. And this is a study called learning from mistakes in climate research. It was published actually about 10 months ago in the journal called theoretical and applied climatology. And they found major problems with that 3% of all studies into climate change. This me sort of meta study, uh, or or attempt to verify other studies. They tried to replicate those 3% of studies and they figured out that a lot of those studies flat out had methodological flaws. In other words, the way that a lot of those studies that cast doubt onto climate change were done did not meet the scientific rigor and standards that one would want. Many of the papers that deny climate change as a result of the systemic flaws in how the papers were done have results that actually point to artifacts in the data as a result of how the experiments were set up rather than any actual uh, uh, counter argument to climate change and climate change being caused by human activity on Earth. And a lot of times they also identify uh, false dichotomies or bad statistical methods. Basically, it's a total indictment that the 3% might be right. It appears that the 3% that cast doubt onto climate change are doing really, really bad science. And it seems quite nefarious too when you take a look at it because these studies had three major flaws. One was that they would cherry pick information. Right. Another was that they used inappropriate curve fitting and they also just ignored physical realities. So sure. it, it sounds as if they're starting with their conclusion and trying to work backwards rather than using the scientific method, which is the other way around. And this is not a huge shock, right? A good question to be asking would be how is this stuff even getting published in peer reviewed journals in the first place. And that's actually a major topic in the scientific world right now. And the explanation is mostly what we would expect. You've got a lot of low quality journals that have a very low standard for what they'll publish. You have people in some cases that are using personal connections and cronyism to get their research published. And then you also have some errors from the peer reviewers. And the reason that this should worry all of us is that the peer review method is supposed to be the gold standard of solid science, right? We have many, many papers uh, on the subject of climate change that just have glaring errors in the way the studies were done. And you would hope that the peer review system would catch that, but it didn't in a lot of these cases. And I, I want to be totally transparent with you. There's probably many studies in the 97% consensus on climate change that also have some methodological problems or might not be replicable. That's just a reality. What should really anger us about all of this is that we've got a crisis in our environment here on Earth. And rather than devoting all of our energy and resources to solving the problem, we have to spend at least some time debunking bad science and trying to explain why the climate skeptics are wrong. And beyond that, even if climate change is a myth, can't we all agree that there are many other good reasons to stop pumping tons of pollution into the air, including disease related to pollution? 
how it affects animals and thus our food supply on and on and so forth. Why is it that we should just ignore everything we're doing to our planet if you can't definitively connect human activities to climate change, which, by the way, you can well, it just sounds like you might have ulterior motives then, because I don't think there's some international conspiracy of 97 percent of scientists who just think that it's all, you know, made up to get grant money or something like this. Yeah, right. What would be the incentive to concoct this conspiracy theory? Of course, Alex Jones has some ideas. I won't even repeat them now because that's not what this program is about. But why would there be such a conspiracy? Is it to hurt the oil barons? I mean, come on. It seems like the incentive would be on the other side so Absolutely. you can get a nice cushy job with the oil industry. And continue making money by pillaging the resources of our planet. Absolutely horrible and really important study. The video you just finished watching was made possible by you through the membership program. You can sign up for membership at davidpackman.com slash membership. We are viewer supported independent media. You can use the coupon code I voted 17 for a 40% discount off of your membership.